Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first are Jane and Joe Radzilski in Thanksgiving on their 35th wedding anniversary, which they are celebrating today and for their wonderful children and all the many blessings in their lives. Jane and Joe are here with us today at St. Basil's. The second are the members of the Catholic Women's League of Canada of the Archdiocese of Toronto for their personal intentions. The third are the members of the Knights of Columbus, Our Lady of Fatima Council 4530, Edmonton, Alberta, in appreciation of the televised Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Christ, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son entrusted Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see him reigning in your glory who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
the Lord be with you. And Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. She stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look inside the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that the Lord had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. In our culture, Mary Magdalene is often described or thought of as a reformed prostitute. You will see her name on houses of refuge or reformatories for prostitutes. Most of us think Mary Magdalene was a young, attractive, and at one time a very sinful woman who, thanks to Jesus, was forgiven and converted into a disciple. Other than being a disciple of Jesus, none of those other things are true. There is no statement in the Bible to support it. Then why do we think of Mary Magdalene as a fallen woman? Habit, mostly. That and 2,000 years of bad press. The Magdalene myth took root back in the Middle Ages. Pope Gregory the Great preached a homily in 591 AD that lumped together three women in three different gospel accounts. He took the sinful woman of Luke, who washed Jesus' feet with his tears, the sinful woman caught in adultery in John's gospel, and Mary of Magdalene, whom Mark says was delivered of seven demons, and he rolled them all into one woman. Mary Magdalene, the prostitute and sinner, was born. It didn't help that medieval painters propagated this myth in paintings. For centuries, religious artwork was the gospel for those who were illiterate. And so the people embraced this image of Mary Magdalene as a prostitute. Art for the Middle Age masses was Middle Age masses was what movies are to us today, a way of defining and shaping culture. Movies and modern fiction not only continued to portray Mary Magdalene in the role of a prostitute or a fallen woman, they have added to it, suggesting that she was more than just a disciple of Jesus. When Jesus Christ Superstar opened in 1970, it was very clear that Mary Magdalene's song, I Don't Know How to Love Him, hinted at something more than pious devotion. One scripture scholar after another has made it quite clear that there is no solid basis for identifying Mary Magdalene with the prostitute who anointed Jesus' feet or that woman who was caught in adultery. The identification does her an injustice, especially since the Bible gives no indication that she was ever a prostitute. The Bible tells us that Mary was cured of seven demons, period. We simply do not know what her life was like before Jesus cured her. The Second Vatican Council corrected the image that Pope Gregory gave and described St. Mary as the first disciple to whom Christ trusted the news of the resurrection. Over the years, many scholars have tried to piece together who Mary was from many accounts. Whenever two or three women are mentioned in the Bible, Mary Magdalene's name is always mentioned first. 
eight out of nine times. Common sense points then to a woman who is not quite so young or so attractive as we may think. Since she was almost always named first, even ahead of Jesus' mother, it is clear that Mary Magdalene was a leader, someone who was older and wiser. If Jesus was about 30 years old when he first met Mary, his mother was probably 44, assuming she conceived him when she was 13 years of age. In order for Mary to lead a group that included the mother of Jesus, Mary would have been at least her age, if not older. She would certainly be past her childbearing years, perhaps even a widow, which gave her the freedom to follow Jesus and support his ministry. To serve well, a woman must have the respect of both women and men. An ex-prostitute forgiven by Jesus might be tolerated, but she would never have been a follower, let alone a disciple in such a male-dominated society. Mary Magdalene was probably a wealthy, middle-aged widow who, when cured of her illness by Jesus, not only followed him, but held some kind of leadership role among his disciples. Now, the bottom line of all of this is this. Jesus understood her and accepted her as she was, whoever she was. How we all long for that to be loved and not judged, to be welcomed and not rejected, to have someone praise our strengths rather than point out our faults. Mary Magdalene reminds us that Jesus knows everything about us. He sees our potential even when others don't. Even when others revile us, gossip about us, make us out to be worse than we really are, Jesus sees the goodness in us and calls it forward. Listen carefully to the scriptures and you will hear all about the love, the hope, and the future that Jesus has planned for you. No matter what your personal history is, you can be sure that if he is calling your name, you belong to him forever. Make Christ the center of your life. And wherever he goes, no matter how scary or uncertain the path, you will have the strength to follow. And even if you don't have all the facts, have faith in him, as Mary Magdalene did. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help us to be true disciples of his love. That we may be open to the love of Christ and conform our lives to his way, his truth, and his life, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the love of Christ will illuminate our lives and help us see others and his love for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we will come to see Christ as a light that opens our eyes to prejudice, oppression, and injustice, we pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ may strengthen those in our television community and help them to follow his light in times of personal struggle, we pray to the Lord. Lord that God's merciful and loving hand will gather to himself all those who have died through the many world's trials and tribulations, we pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty Father, help us to fashion lives of faith and to strengthen us with your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Let's receive this we are with humble, contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all. Accept, O Lord, the offerings presented in commemoration of St. Mary Magdalene, whose homage of charity was graciously accepted by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. The great example lends us courage. The fervent prayer sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join me now in this prayer about God's love? O oh God, your love for me is a mystery. I can count hundreds of reasons why I am unworthy of your providence and care. When I identify my talents and abilities, I must recognize that even these come from you. I can neither understand your esteem for me nor pretend to adequately respond to your graciousness. Guide me, then, in our relationship. Remove from me everything which keeps me apart from you. Give me all I need to grow and flourish in your love. Amen.
Let us pray. May the holy reception of your mysteries, Lord, instill in us that persevering love with which St. Mary Magdalene clung resolutely to Christ, her Master, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our thanks to three donors. The first are Jane and Joan Rodzilski. The second are the members of the Catholic Women's League of Canada of the Archdiocese of Toronto. And the third are the members of the Knights of Columbus, Our Lady of Fatima Council, 4530 Edmonton, Alberta. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick, and your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass. I worship you.